We've already had a preview slash spoiler of the bond stretch term in molecular mechanics as defined in the parameters video, but let's go ahead and define again what the energy of the bond terms are in molecular mechanics. So in amber specifically, this is equal to the sum over all of the bonds, which we have to predefine for our system, of the uh, bond force constant Kb times the bond distance minus the equilibrium bond distance squared. Okay, so this is pretty similar to the term that you would see for harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics, which are in fact modeling the same thing. The difference would be that instead of Kb here in harmonic oscillator, you had one half K. So it's a very similar type of thing, except for they're absorbing the one half into this uh, Kb here. Maybe for convenience, maybe not. Okay, so as we've said, the parameters for a given bond are going to be R0, which is, if I can draw an arrow, let's see, second times a charm, equilibrium bond distance, equilibrium bond length, and that is typically in units of angstroms, because typically our bond lengths and all of our coordinates are in units of angstroms unless they are in units of Bohr. So pay attention to make sure that you do not have the case where it is in units of Bohr. Okay, and then we have Kb as a parameter as well. That is the bond spring, bond, you can call it the spring constant, you can call it the force constant, let's say the bond spring constant. And if our energy is typically in units of kilocalories per mole, uh, just the, uh, the kilojoules per mole divided by 4.184, that conversion factor, we have kcal per mole per angstrom squared. Because we have angstrom minus angstrom squared, and we need to get that to kcal per mole, times kcal per mole divided by angstrom squared, that gets us to our needed energy there. Okay, and the variable, for this system, or for this particular energy term, the variable is R, which is just the bond length, which is in angstroms. Okay, so we have plotted over here what that potential kind of looks like. So if we have our exact potential, that typically looks like something that's going very quickly towards infinity, although it ends up being not quite infinity at zero. So something that goes up very, very quickly, if you bring the bond to short, something that goes down and drops down to a minimum energy where the force is zero at the equilibrium bond length, and then it goes up to some value and flattens out as the bond gets very, very long, very, very stretched, that would be the dissociation energy of the bond if we're defining the minimum to be zero here, which we will for convenience. So at R equals infinity, the energy of the bond is equal to the dissociation energy. All right, and then our molecular mechanics function is an approximate function on top of that, which we have in yellow here. Okay, so how do we arrive at this particular potential? Well, much in the same way that we did for a harmonic oscillator. So we have the restriction that zero is less than or equal to r, which is less than or equal to infinity. Okay, so we have the boundary conditions that E of r equals zero equals positive infinity or some approximation to it. We have that E of r equals infinity is equal to the positive dissociation energy. All right, so this is, those are what we would have asymptotically. But we have, in the meantime, we want to get some approximation for that energy there. So let's say E of R. Now let's do a second order Taylor series around the minimum there. So we have E naught, E naught, or the energy at e at r e q we could call that e e q 
plus 1 over 1 factorial is just 1 in that first order term. The first derivative of the energy with respect to r evaluated at r equals rq, req, times r minus req, that's the first order term in the Taylor series, plus 1 over 2 factorial is 2, times the second derivative of e of r with respect to r, evaluated at the equilibrium, times r minus req squared plus dot dot dot. Then we'd have a third order, fourth order, etc. term all the way until we had the exact function at an infinite order Taylor series. Okay, so going through this, we have that the equilibrium uh, bond energy we've already defined to be zero, so that goes away. Uh, the first derivative of the energy evaluated at the equilibrium distance is zero. The tangent line to the slope here is zero at the equilibrium bond distance. So since this is zero, this whole term goes to zero. Then we have the first non-zero term here where we have one over two factorial is one over two times second derivative evaluated at the minimum. So kind of the, the parabola at the minimum here times r minus req squared, which is what we have here. So for our particular bond, we already have this r minus req squared. So that implies in this case that our k, well, kb, as we call it, our force constant for the bond is equal to 1 half of the second derivative of the energy with respect to the bond length evaluated at the equilibrium bond length. So it is the kind of springiness of our curve at our minimum here in our second order Taylor series. Okay, so you see that these limits here, what they should go to uh, is that the E of R of, uh, equals infinity should be positive DE, but in fact for MM, it's not that, it's positive infinity. So you see at there's no point where this function stops going up and tails off. So in fact, for molecular mechanics, our particular bond energy term here, that there is no dissociation allowed because the energy keeps going up as the bond gets longer and longer. So in molecular mechanics and force fields where you only have a second order term, you cannot break a bond. Now to get around that, you could use you could use various uh, higher order terms. You could use something called a Morse potential that does flatten out uh, eventually. But for the simplest possible term, there is no bond dissociation. So if you need to do bond dissociation, you need to break bonds, you need to include some other model besides just this right there. And for specifying what all the bonds are in the system, that's generally uh, done internally in whatever program you're using. But if you were doing it manually, what you would do is just look at your system and see where all your covalent bonds are. So in this case, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bonds in acetic acid there, and two bonds in water. And then we have, just for some examples here, we have HF. So I'm going to run a trajectory of this here. So this is where the center of mass isn't moving, uh, the molecule isn't rotating, the only thing that's changing here is the bond length of the molecule as it moves around. So that's just this one internal degree of freedom moving, which would be uh, what would be moving along this surface here, along this potential energy that we've got for our molecular mechanics. So that's the bond stretch term. That is the first term that we've gone through in the energy function of force fields.